Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 3, Episode 2. This is a much better episode in terms of the quality of the painters than Episode 1 was, so let's get started. All right, the first model is Richard E. Grant. He is an actor. I recognize him from a variety of things, but I can't think of something specifically. So let's take a look at where they placed him. The judges aren't putting them in elaborate placements anymore because the contestants never do anything with the, plate, with the backgrounds. So he's placed in front of a red background in a nice chair and he put some earphones in and it looks quite relaxed. Now the reveal. After four hours, three painters who have been painting Richard will turn their easels around and he will select one of those paintings to go home with him. Now, in episode one, this was the reaction that uh, one, of the, one of the models had when the paintings got turned around. And I think it was because the quality of the painting in episode one was so atrocious. And so this is not the look you want to see on a client's face when you produce a commission for them. And this is Stanley Tucci's reaction in episode one of the season, season, season three, which was also, I think, he needed a moment to compose himself before he could react positively to his the paintings that were done of him. Now here's the reaction that Richard E. Grant has <laughs> in this episode. And he was elated. He was just he, he was elated when these paintings got turned around. So here's the reveal. The painters turn the paintings around, and as I said, Richard is going to pick one of these to go with him. But here's a chance to see all three of them, but we're going to look at them more close up. Each one is an oil or acrylic painting. There were no, I don't think there were any watercolor, yeah, there have been no watercolorists so far this season. It's a pretty rare thing to have watercolorists, but we can learn a lot from looking at different mediums of paint. So this is the first one, and I kind of like that she puts what I call the DNA of the painting all around him. She puts spots of color that she used in the painting around his face. I really like this painting. I think it has a lot of life in it, and I think it has a resemblance. Now later, the judges are going to spend a lot of time talking about this painting, which was interesting and proved once again how incredibly selective art is. So hang on and we will look at it again later. They didn't spend a lot of time in the reveal talking about it. This is the second one of Richard. Again, uh, quite a good resemblance. That's the thing. In episode one, we really didn't have anybody who painted anything that, recogni that was recognizable of the sitters. But in this episode, we do. That certainly looks like him. It's certainly more muted in color and um, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fine painting. I don't know that it's something that you would remember. And that's not the point. It's a fine painting. So Richard got to choose from three very good selections. And we'll see which one he selected. This is the third one, which I think is the weakest of the three. I say weakest because the color is way more muted. But that's not why I'm saying weak. I just think it's weaker in terms of does it resemble him? And also just weaker in terms of skill. So let's take a look now at which one he chooses to take home with him. And it's the one I would have picked, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Again, I do think the painting has to be a good painting no matter what wall it's on. It doesn't have to be specific to the person's home that it happens to resemble. So he chose this one and the painter, the artist was so ecstatic, she just ran up and gave him a big kiss, which was it was a sweet moment. So he's going home with that painting and now we will go on to the next sitter or model. Now the next sitter is someone who's re very recognizable to me. It's Sue Perkins who hosted, co-hosted the Great British Bake Off for years and years and years. She does not anymore. She's a comedian and here she is in the setting. She, it was very hard for her to sit still. But uh, so, but uh, that was just interesting to me. Yeah, you know, everybody's personality is revealed a little bit. But um, and that's the that's the actual what do you call it, pose that she was in. And now we're going to look at the reveal. And the reveal shows again three 
pretty fine paintings, I would say. Here's the reveal, which I consider the most exciting moment of the program. It's just so impactful when they turn the paintings around and the individual gets to see three different interpretations of, of who they are and what they look like. So let's take a look a little bit closer up at some of her choices. This is the first one, which is, I think, the weakest of the three. I know it's monochromatic, so that might be why I'm saying that, but I don't think so. I just don't think it has as much a resemblance to her as some of the other ones. Um, it's it's. I always squint my eyes to be able to look at these, and I don't see the kind of defining shapes that I would like to see, or a variety of shapes that I would like to see in the actual face. But that that is subjective and completely my bias. I, I'm always going to be biased toward more color and using color as, as your value statement. Now, this fella, he works... We saw him in the last season, and I'll show you paintings that he did last year. He got to the semifinals last year. No, he got to the finals last year. Whoa. So he works by putting uh, candle wax on the paintings. He lets it drip on the canvas, and then he does this pointillism type of applying paint, which is takes tremendous amounts of time. He certainly got a likeness, and I love the luminosity of what he does. He didn't get a chance to finish, of course. Uh, this is... The third, yeah, this is the third one, which, I, you know, has a tremendous resemblance to her and is probably the most traditional in terms of school of painting and being traditionally taught how to paint, which is surprising to me that the judges liked it as much as they did because in the past, I mean, in episode number two, which we just recapped, they didn't like the traditional painters. They were... They've, and they state their reasons in this episode for why that's the case. They feel that the traditional painters aren't bringing their personality into the painting the way more contemporary painters would. I don't know if that's true or not. So now she, Sue is going to pick the one that she's going to go home with her. And you can see the, uh, the artist along with the painting of Sue. And indeed, that's the one she picks. So, oh, so, so Sue's pick. Sue's pick is that very traditional painting. Uh, I think it does resemble her the most. Um, and it's, you know, it's a lovely painting. Good choice. Now we go on to Nina Sosanya, who is an actress as well. Now, she, she was put in a setting just with a, a backdrop behind her. So the judges are definitely not putting a lot of energy into these settings anymore like they did in uh, episode two. I haven't done episode one, but I'll, I'll probably go back and do that one too. But here's this, the pose that she that they put her in. It's a lovely pose. And she's, wow, she's a really pretty lady. Anyway, um, so let's look at the reveal. As I said, I find this the most exciting moment of the program. And each one of these celebrity models was just thrilled to see what, was done over those four hours, unlike in episode one, which was really kind of appalling. So she has three paintings to choose from. This has nothing to do with the final judging of who goes on in the program. It just has to do with which painting she'll take home. Uh, this one this one speaks to me because, um, you know, it's probably the way I like to paint. I like to look at value shapes and I like to um, use color value swap outs. An example of a color value swap out would be, you see under her ear where there's like almost a bluish gray uh, mark happening or up on her forehead. Those are choices to use the same, to, to mix the same value of a color and to put it right on what the flesh tones are. And it just, so it substitutes for a flesh tone and creates a much more interesting painting. This is the second one, which I don't have a lot to say about also, this one. Um, it's a fun, really fine well painting. painted, I've got to say. It's not my style, and I would not say that this was traditional. This is sort of more a contemporary type of painting. I don't know why I say that, except for um, it has something to do with the light, that the traditional painters have a very strong discipline of sticking with one specific light source kind of like the old masters did I guess but but this is the second one and let's see what the next one is all 
All right, the next one is sort of a black and white kind of sketch. Uh, it, I don't know that this has a resemblance to her, but, um, and I really don't have a lot to say about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I kind of wish I did. Um, I don't know how this could possibly take four hours. That's my first reaction. You know, you get this weird thing that happens. Either you get a sense that they, some people did not have enough time because they're used to much longer time to work, and some people seem to have too much time. And in this case, I, it's inexplicable. I mean, I would have done that in 20 minutes. All right, Nina's pick. Let's see which one she picked. She picked the one I would have picked. I think it has a freshness certainly looks very alive and is certainly a resemblance to her. I, I, I just gravitate toward simpler shapes and cleaner kinds of colors. This is completely subjective and completely my opinion, but this is the one that she takes home. Now we're going to get to the real judging. Now the real judging is who is going to go on. Three painters are going to be selected in this episode, but only one will go on to the finals. So let's take a look at the three that they chose as the semi-finalists. The first one is the more traditional painting. And so I thought, well, she doesn't have a chance because they discounted almost every traditional painting in the last uh, series that we watched in season two. <laughs> but they talked about it and talked about that, it, it, that potentially she had more to show than this traditional style. This one they talked about for a long time. And boy, it, this one irritated me because one of the judges did, felt like the top half of the face looked like him and the bottom of the face did not. I do not have the same feeling at all. I thought it was a good representation of what he looked like. But uh, they, uh, two of the judges were very much against this painting. Now the next one, this fellow was in the last series in season two and he went on to the semifinals, so he was one of the three that was shortlisted for uh, to actually be in the finals. Again, he has this very distinct style of pointillism. I I'm kind of fascinated by what he does. I I uh, <laughs> it's so specific in terms of you know you couldn't you couldn't say that it was anybody but him. In other words, it's very identifiable but it's also very well done. And I, I kind of get lost in all those little dots and enjoy looking at how the colors kind of blend together, almost like a, a, a jigsaw puzzle in a way. That, that just takes incredible skill as a colorist to, to know your values and putting colors next to each other that will create those shapes. I can do it with big strokes, but I can't do it with tiny dots. Now, this was the painting that he won uh, his episode with in the last season. I just wanted you to see when he gets a chance, he, he finishes this in four hours. And I, here's a close up so you can get a better idea of his little dot technique. I wondered if he showed up knowing that he got into the finals last year and just sort of like, well, they know who I am, so I don't really have to uh, finish. But I'm not sure about that. They, they, I felt like they just just discounted him completely, like they'd seen it before and they didn't really care to see anymore. So that was that was kind of a surprise to me. So here are the three painters, and it must be an incredibly long day. You've got the four days, four hours to paint. You got to schlep to wherever this place is. You got to bring all your stuff. Wait for the judging. Uh, it it's it would be so exhausting. And now let's see who they decide the winner is. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. and this person is going to be the second person selected, because someone was picked it from the last episode, to go on to the semifinal. So it would be seven semifinalists in the end. She was so excited. It's the traditional painting of Sue Perkins. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of what she does. I think she's a very accomplished and an exciting painter. So I don't get a sense yet for who I hashtag Joe is always right think is going to be the winner. Um, yeah, that hasn't happened yet. So far from the past judging, this is for me considered to be too too formal for what they like. But, but we'll see. I think she has a good chance. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.